So let's look at some of the key compounds in cannabis. We're very familiar with the number of pictures that you see in the magazines and on the web as far as the trichomes and the different colors of different cannabis. And as you look at each one of these, it's important to note that as you're seeing in the chart below, that there's the key compounds being terpenes, cannabinoids, waxes, starches, alkaloids. All of these look like there's just two or three, but in essence, there's a significant number of them. One of the things that you also see is it's not just a few compounds as well as what you're getting for a formulation. So on the right hand side, you're able to see the different types of extraction processes you can get. Sometimes you're having things in the jar that have a lot of waxes in it. And this would be a great product for something for a lotion. It'd be a great product for something to be able to use as a balming agent. You also have things that have oil and more oil and less than than, and less waxes. And in this case, it could be a great one for a tincture. But what you're really trying to do is you're trying to be able to maximize what you have for the different formulations that you need. And on the left-hand side, we look towards the um, scientific and the economics. So when you're looking at the scientific side, you're looking at the active ingredients. You're thinking about what other things could be in that mixture. Sometimes they're adulterants, sometimes they're pesticides, sometimes there's other um, components that are not cannabinoids. And on the other side, when you're looking at it economically, you're now looking at things as far as what does it cost for me to provide this extraction product? What are the different costs for the investment? What are the different costs for capital? What are the different costs for the running costs for the money to buy as well as human resources? When you look at the number of compounds that are already discovered within the plant through the scientific literature, there's a significant number of these, of these plants. When you also go back through and you realize that the original part of what you were looking for in cannabis was pharmacognosy, ethnobotany, dietary supplements with a focus on the chemistry and the medicine, each one of these is you go to a store and you were to see a number of the components that are out there, whether it's black cohosh or echinacea or, or the omega-3, omega-6s and fish oil, all of these are still dietary supplements and each one of them probably has the same number of components that would be in there. We're focused on the cannabis plant, and when you're focused on the cannabis plant, you also realize the number of isomers that there are. You will typically hear people talk about cannabidiol, and that's CBD. But within CBD, you have a number of isomers of the same exact compound. And what we're gonna look at is we're gonna look at how do I actually set up an extraction process that allows me to have the formulation ingredients that I want. Let's talk about natural products that you use every day. So when we're talking about not having it be a magic, let's talk about how to have things that we're commonly doing. One of the things that we commonly do is we make coffee. Coffee is a natural product. Coffee is something that we get the flavors and we get the caffeine, we have the other components. And there's a number of ways to make coffee, whether you're making a cold brew or you're making a hot brew. Each one of those processes is different. So we know that with a hot brew, we're able to make coffee in five or 10 minutes. And with a cold brew, it can be 10 to 12 hours. So each one of those is now a different process. When you're doing the cold brew, you'll have about 1,000 compounds. When you have a hot brew, you'll probably have 1,500 to 1,800 compounds that you're extracting into that coffee. And then you start to move towards what you do for a practice on coffee, and you look at tea. There's a significant number of, of, of tea products that are on the market today. And within that process, you're typically taking tea and you're moving it through a hot water. So now you, you place a, a tea bag into hot water and now it extracts the compounds and then from there you drink the tea. But there's other types of things that you look at on the shelves. And so it's fragrances, it's flavors. All the different things that you have come from natural products. So whether it's a perfume or whether it's a flavored product that you're adding for vanilla or a nutmeg, each one of those is something that you have that's been extracted. So you're doing that every single day and, and we wanna bring cannabis into that same process so that you are able to understand the processes and make better decisions on the formulation. If I was to look at an entire process, this is one from Dr. Jerry King, an article that he had written and through that process, you can see he's, he's divided it up into a blue, a green, a yellow, and different processes that happen along the way, all the way from the original plant to grinding it, 
to having a certain grind size to be able to do an extraction, to be able to do pre-processing. If you were doing decarboxylation, for example, and we'll cover those parts, as well as afterwards being able to do what's called winterization, to be able to pull out some of the waxes that's appropriate, depending on the type of extraction process that you used. Each one of these is we're going to go through, and it's a process that's well-defined.